good of anything. And one thing we're, as traders go is that we surround ourselves with great, um, when we have good traders and um, uh, educators, we surround ourselves with great educators. And, you know, Hubert has is, is been around as long as probably as long as I have um, in the community, in the trading, uh, in the trading uh, community. And uh, Hubert is also not only a great educator, but he's also, he sent me some great gifts. I know, listen, he knew I bought a brand new house and he, first thing, the first thing he sent me was a brand new TV. Now every time I look at the TV, I look at Hubert Centers. I'm like, my God, I don't know if you're a great marketer or just a, and only a very good gift, uh, a gift person, but you know what? He's, uh, he's very, been very, very, um, uh, he's been giving so much to the trading community and also uh, to everyone else. His knowledge has been is world renowned. He's wrote several books out there. And, um, you know, when it comes to understanding the markets and, and having them here, it's always been great. And I look forward to them. Um, we always meet up up in, we, we run special events together. If it's not in Vegas, New York or Florida, uh, but, uh, but it's always great to have uh, Hubert to come back and speak. So in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, don't want to take too much time away from him. He's got a lot of great stuff to talk about and he's going to warn you, you know, like everyone else of the danger of trading. But the most important thing is where there's risk, there's reward. So we're just going to talk about the great part of it. In the meantime, listen, Hubert, thanks for coming. And everyone, enjoy the presentation. And if you have any questions, any problems, don't hesitate to give us a call. Hubert, stage is all yours. Thank you, Fausto. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to do a quick audio test. I have a new PC. Uh, recently, the, the Bat Cave, which I'll tell you about in just a few minutes, got hit by a flood and lightning all within a span of about two months. So... If you can hear me, just give me a yes. And if you can see the red letters on the black slide, just give me yes for slide. That'll be perfect because sometimes I have problems with the webinar software and I just want to make sure that I am doing it correctly. Volume is a little low. We'll turn your speakers up just a little bit because it looks like mine is maxing out over here on this side of things. I might be able to turn it up a little bit for you there. There you go. All right. So before we get started, I am going to give you a special opportunity at the end of the webinar to uh, to purchase a, a a course. All right, a an on-demand course. So I just want to make it, disarm you ahead of time. I'm going to give you some really good information. I'm going to share with you what I'm doing right now in the markets, and I'm going to show you a way that you can scan for better trades. Now, the stuff that Fausto just shared with you is kind of like a lot, a lost art. And if you've never if you've never learned how to be a tape trader which is what, what Fausto is, is that's how all of us learn how to first trade when we all got started. So it's a very good skill. You got to have it. It's the number one thing that you should always fall back on is learning how to uh, read time and sales and level two and level three. And that's all really, really good information. So you should definitely take Fausto up on his, on his offer. It's a really good offer. All right. So first warning, danger, danger, Will Robinson. Now, as I read this warning disclaimer, I'm not going to read it word for word. It's up there so you can read it. Um, I'm not going to answer questions as I go through the PowerPoint presentation because if I do, it'll take too long. But what I'll do is I'll answer all your questions at the end. And the, the uh, presentation is only going to take about 30, 45 minutes. And then I'm going to take questions for 10 or 15 minutes. And we're going to look at a lot, a lot of live charts this morning. So the PowerPoint is a CAM presentation. It's got some old charts to teach you the theory of what I'm going to share with you so that you can kind of consume it the right way. And then we're just going to do live chart after live chart after live chart. So you can see it working, you can see it not working, and stuff like that, all right? All right, so danger. Danger, Will Robinson. You are probably going to lose all of your money trying to learn how to trade. I know it sucks, but it's true. Uh, there's just not a lot of us that, that do this profitably. I've heard numbers anywhere from 30% to 20% to 10% to 2%. And it depends on whose study you're buying into and what they're talking about. So just for the love of goodness, please be careful out there. You should never trade more money than you can afford to lose. Only discretionary funds is what you should be trading. Now, I am a registered Series 3, and I'm a registered Series 30, which sounds really fancy, but it's not. It means that I took a test and got a 70 on it, and I'm a registered 30 and a 3 for a couple different reasons. Number one, I own a futures IB, a, a, a guaranteed futures IB. I'm sorry, an independent IB which just means I can clear my trades pretty much anywhere I want to because I'm, I put up a bunch of money and I pass some tests. And, and I'm also my commissions are super low. Like I don't pay retail commissions. I pay professional commissions. But there's a trade-off. If you're a professional trader, you can get cheaper commissions, but your data feed costs more. So I have to pay the professional data fees. 
Um, and then I also have seats on the exchange. And if you're interested in saving money on on commissions and stuff, the the, the cheaper of the two routes is <laughs> a seat on the exchange. You could lease a seat or you can outright buy a seat. And then if you wanted to start up a brokerage firm, you could. Uh, I don't really clear other retail traders. I just clear my own stuff. So that's the reason I'm a Series 3 and 30. I'm registered by the CFTC and the NFA. And the only reason was because I wanted cheaper commissions. Now, um, well, like I said, discretionary income only. You're probably going to get hurt in trading. It's going to be uh, hazardous to your health and your wealth. And it's going to suck because you're going to lose a lot of money and it's going to just be painful at first. Now, I like to go a little bit further when I say that and talk about, look, your trading career is going to be like a bad country song in reverse. And what I mean by that is uh, your, 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 your wife's probably going to leave you for your best friend because it's a country song. Your, uh, your kids are going to grow up hating you. Your dog's going to die because there's no cats in country songs. They're going to repossess your Ford or your Chevy pickup truck. And then they're also going to foreclose on your single wide or double wide trailer. Now, I can say this because I am a redneck from Kentucky, so I can make fun of rednecks from Kentucky. So if you understand the disclaimer that I'm giving you, and you understand that I'm, I'm trying to do a decent job of telling you, like, walk away from trading. It's not for everybody. Just give me a yes. That way, if the NFA and the CFTC audits it, they'll say, well, he did a good job of trying to scare him to death away from trading. All right. Um, <clears throat> so my name is Hubert Centers. This is my no BS approach to trading and investing. Like Fausto said, I've been around a while. Um, sometimes I get in trouble because I open my mouth and, 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 and tell things how I see them. And some exchanges and some brokerage firms don't really like that. But I don't really care because I have to be able to sleep at night and I'm not worried about their profits. I'm worried about my profits and, and your profits, not their profits. So uh, now that I've sufficiently done a decent job of scaring you, I want to give you a little hope. This is what I, I believe. I grew up in the coal mines of eastern Kentucky, right in the, the corner of eastern Kentucky, Virginia, and West Virginia. There were three main things that you could do growing up there if you wanted to stay in the area. You could be basically a teacher, all right? You could be a factory worker or a coal miner, or you could be a meth dealer. N none of those three appealed to me, except maybe the meth dealer because I can make a lot of money. But I don't think I would do well in a jail cell uh, with uh, Bubba in an orange suit as a roommate. I don't think I would do well in that environment. So I was like, okay, I got to get out of here. So when I was 17, I left that area and I started going on a quest of figuring out if I could find what other wealthy, driven, successful people were doing. And that's kind of what I've done since I've been 17. Now, I will tell you, if you want to be a millionaire, which is a, go a good goal for everybody, right? <clears throat> you are going to have to work your ass off. It is not going to be easy. The first million is the hardest, but you are going to have to actually put in a lot of time and energy into building whatever it is you are trying to build. You will physically have to do a lot of work. You will have to work your ass off, okay? So make sure that you understand that, okay? So uh, I've been fortunate enough to put in enough time and energy and work uh, to uh, now hang out with other successful, wealthy individuals. And we get together in mastermind groups where you have to, the requirement of being in a mastermind group is you have to be a millionaire or multimillionaire. We got to actually have a couple billionaires in there. And the an annual initiation fee is twenty-five dollars to $50,000. Now, these are some of the pictures from our mastermind. This is Paula Abdul. She's actually about six inches shorter than that because she's got six inch heels on. This is uh, Sir Richard Branson. He has longer hair than I do. But I have more chins than he does here, which probably means I'm going to die of a massive heart attack before he does because he exercises all the time. Uh, both Richard and I suffer from dyslexia, um, it, which is an interesting conversation that we had. Mr. Wonderful, if you ever have to have dinner with him, he will bore you to tears talking about a $100 and $400 bottle of wine. And then this is Dave Ramsey. You either love or hate Dave. Uh, Dave and I, we do business, and um, he's, a really, he's a really nice guy. And then this is a picture of me in what we call the back cave and i'll tell you that story in just a second and these are the screens that i'm in front of right now they're 24 inch dells and this microphone is the microphone i'm on now i am not dressed like that today i have a t-shirt on a pair of shorts and a hat uh as i'm sitting here giving this presentation now i don't say any of this or show you any of this to impress you what i do why i do this is to impress upon you if a little fat redneck from K kentucky can do this um You've got a good shot, too. Yeah, children. I've got three children, and I've been married for 
23 years to the same amazing woman. So I'm, uh, oddly enough, our, our, our oldest just went to college here at UK, and I think I'm going to have to put my wife on Xanax because it's, it's freaking her out. All right, so like I said earlier, if you want to be successful in anything, a lot of people will tell you what you're going to do is you're going to start here. That's going to be the start. And let's say this is the pile of cash that you're going for, right? I've never seen anybody go from a start position straight to success unless you're an overnight success, which means you've been working for 8 to 12 years and then, oh, well, you're just an overnight success. I've also never seen this happen where you stair step and just gradually get better. I've never seen that happen. This is the common most important thing. When I, when I survey all of our millionaire buddies in the mastermind and the two billionaires, one of the most common things that I ask them is, why do you still do this? Why do I still do this? What are we doing it for? Is it to is it because we like it? Is it because we're greedy? Is it because um, we like to have fun? Is it because we like to pay things forward? Everybody had a little bit different issue. So um, if you have an issue, okay, all right. So real quick, what do you think the number one answer? And everybody had a little bit different answer. Why do super successful people still try to go after what they're going after? Let's see what see if anybody can kind of guess. And there were a bunch of different answers depending on fun, love it. Some of us answered that way, yep. Um, but there was one common one. I was like, what are the most common reasons? Because they like it, love what they do, power. Some of them were like that. Uh, there, there you go. So BIP, BIP M has the correct answer. Because we do not want to go back where we came from. In other words, the challenge, and we were fearful of wanting to slide back and have to start over. So like I said earlier, what happens is we have a little bit of success or we have failure, and then our journey looks like a big weird spaghetti bowl, and that's actually what success looks like. So if anybody is trying to sell you a, uh, a shortcut to long-term success, I don't know of one. Now, like I said earlier, um, when I was growing up, I watched a lot of Ghost of Mr. Chicken, Scooby-Doo, and Batman uh, cartoons and movies and stuff, and I was like, man, if I ever make enough money... I'm going to have these secret bookcase doors in my house. And that's how you get to my office. We call it the bat cave. Um, so you pull this book and you hit this button. And in my house, it opens up into a 1,500 square foot office where me and my team work every day. And I know it's childish and I know it's immature, but it's kind of fun and we kind of like it. So congratulations. That's my background. You're in the you're right place at the right time. Uh, in, in the next few minutes, I'm going to give you an opportunity to learn a certain tactic it, that with combined with candlestick charts will, will give you a new opportunity to take your trading to a new level. So you're obviously going to wonder what this works on. This works on stocks, options, futures, forex, it works on the bond market, it works on gold, and it works on commodities. All right, so this is going to be different. We're going to have fun in a good way. I do take what I do for a living very, very serious. I just don't take myself very serious. I like to have fun. I haven't met anyone that gets out of this uh, this uh, little business that we call life alive. So you might as well have fun while you're here. All right. So these are the back-tested results of this strategy over the last five years on the S&P 500. On the S&P 500, the stocks in the index, it worked on 430 out of 500, which would have given an 86% probability of working on the stuff in the S&P 500. Now, if you would have done every single signal, if you would have took the, the long, the short, the long, the long, the long, the short, and the long, you would have got a 33% return, which is not bad. But I'm going to show you how you can filter out and increase your rate of return from 33% to 79% by removing the counter trend signals. In other words, if you're in a major uptrend, I don't want you shorting stuff. I would much rather just see you go long. And if you're in a major downtrend, I want to see you short this stuff. I don't want to see you buying dips. You're going to wait for a three-bar confirmation, and that's what we're going to filter for on all the stocks that we're going to be looking at. Now, this works also really good in the stock market, the option market, the futures market, and the currency or forex market. It's been profitable 29 currencies over the last 10 years. That's a really good track record. Now, in order to do that, you got to have a multi-time frame analysis, and you want to use a daily, an hourly, and a 10-minute time frame chart. All right, so time frame selection. So you should see on your screen right now, do you see a, a, a slide that says time frame selection? So this is really important. You have to figure out first 
What's your objective? How long do you want to stay in this trade? So what I like is I use a daily, and that's going to tell me I'm probably going to be in the trade for weeks. And the chart to the right, the cloud for the Ichimoku cloud study, is going to extend 20 to 30 days to the right. If I'm looking at an hourly chart, I know I'm going to be in, the, in it for days, and in most cases, a minimum of three days. If I'm looking at a 10-minute chart, I'm going to be in the trade for about four hours. Does that make sense? So I'm going to go daily, hourly, 10-minute. And I want to try to stay, if I can, on the right side of the daily, and I want to trade on the trend side. I want to stay on the right side of the trend. You can do counter-trend trades, and in the live charting session, I'm going to walk you through some of the better trades right now for bottom fishing. All right, so this is what you want. This is the number one technique used in Japan. Eight years in a row, there's been a number one best-selling book in Japan based upon technical analysis. And uh, if, you've, if you've ever translated from anything from Japanese to English, it's kind of a pain in the rear end. Um, it, the, the tech tactic or the indicator is called Ichimoku, which, which means at a glance. And you're going to know exactly what's happening in seconds. It's really good for trends and signals, and it's designed to produce very clear signals. So let's go through, and this is the edge you want. Now, Fausto talked about this earlier, like a lot of indicators are lagging, and he's 100% correct. Most indicators are just a combination of price, momentum, or rate of change, or volume, right? So the, it's those three or four components, and we all just mix them up and match them up and make our own little special blend of an indicator. The thing that makes this indicator a little different is yes, it's going to give you the past. Yes, it's going to give you the present. But it's also going to give you the future of what's going to happen with this thing. If it goes up or if it goes down, it's going to tell you where it's going to be located at. So that's one of the things that makes this indicator different than a lot of other indicators out there. The past, yes, will be laggy. The present will be now, and the future will future pace what it thinks it's going to do. So... Does everyone see a black chart with a little blue stream running through the chart right now? All right, so we're all in the same place. All right, so let's learn how this thing works. It's called Ichimoku. I am not here to sell you an indicator, all right? I will, at the end of the presentation, give you an opportunity to learn how to use it better, but this indicator should be on every platform out there that you use. If, if, if Ichimoku is not on your platform, you, have a, you don't have a great platform. All right, it's on almost all of the popular ones, and I'll show you a way, even if you don't have a really good platform, that you can use for free. All right, so first off, this is the cloud, C-L-O-U-D. All right, now, theory behind the cloud is if the price action is above the cloud, in most cases, that's going to be considered a trending, a trending environment in whatever you're trading. And then here's what you're looking for. It's going to bounce off the cloud, bounce off the cloud. Oh, this one didn't bounce here, but it bounced here, and then it's going to bounce here, 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 and here. All right? Everybody understand? If it's below the cloud, then we want to try to stay short in most cases unless we're doing a specific counter trend trade. So first theory is if price action is above the little blue cloud, we're bullish in nature, and this blue cloud should support us. Now, this is what makes it different. See this right here? This is the future. If it sells off, it should bounce off this cloud. And right now it's telling you this thing is going to go sideways to slightly higher based upon the math that it's doing. All right. Now let's go through each individual component and learn how this works. All right. So we've got the cloud, C-L-O-U-D. Now this is called the turn line, T-U-R-N. And I'll show you how that's calculated. Now what you can see is this is going to be first support. And then we're going to have second support. And then we're going to have third support. So this is going to be a nine period midpoint average it's not a nine point moving average it's a midpoint average all right here we go again c l o u d this is the turning line t u r n and then this is the standard line the std this is a nine this is a 26 so if we break the yellow what we will do is we will go to the purple if we break the purple we're going to go to the top of the blue if we go if we if we do not hold at the top of the blue we're going to go to the bottom of the blue and then if the bottom of the blue does not hold, and if we get one, two, or three closes below that cloud, heads up, that's going to be a great short for us. But we're going to we're going to go with the trend until it proves us wrong. So in this example, you see you cross the yellow, you cross the purple, and then you would buy either here or you'd buy here. Here's a buy, here's a buy, and here's a buy. So we're going to believe it 
up until one, two, three times. And then after that, if it closes below it, we're going to reverse and we're going to go short. All right, here's the last piece. We've got the cloud, C-L-O-U-D. We've got the turning line, T-U-R-N. We've got the standard line, the STD. And then here we have the lagging line, which is exactly what Fausto was talking about. Lagging indicators lag. And this is the lag part of it. So this is going to be the past. This is going to be now, which is called the present. And this is going to be called, hey, this is what we think the future is going to happen. This thing is going to trade sideways to slightly up. All right. Very effective for day trading. Just use the smaller time frame of um, 10 minute or five minute chart. Yes, this is called Ichimoku. All right. Let's go through some examples so we can get to live charts because I want to spend a lot of time with you with just live charts. Because PowerPoint, as good as it is for an effective teaching tool, it's really just good for theory and for perfect scenarios. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to scan through some stuff and see if we can't find some good trades for next week. Okay. And I'll actually, you can do a list of symbols and I'll tell you where I think they're going to go. All right. The turning line, the midpoint calculation, you're going to take the high and the low of the last nine days and you're going to divide them by two. So here's how that works. So you're going to take today right here at this point right here. This is going to be today. And you're going to count back nine bars. Here's the low at 434.39. Here's the high right there at 465.75. You're going to add these two creatures together. And you're going to magically come up with 914. Then you're going to divide that by two. That's going to give you 450.07. No, I'm not a math genius. The answer is right down here. In high school and in college, I got D's as in dogs in both high school and in college algebra not B's as in boy. So you don't have to be a math genius to do that. Now that number right here is going to be 450.07. Now, based upon what you know, the price action was below the cloud. It ran into the cloud. It rolled over. Based upon what you know, the price action was below the cloud. It ran into the cloud. It rolled over, and it's about to break this red line at 450. If it breaks that red line, it's going to go right here. We're going to short it, and our first target is going to be T1, 425.42. Right. All right. Yeah. Don't worry about the price. The, the price, the price section. Don't worry whatsoever. They're all old slides. We're going to do all new, new live stuff here in just a minute. Don't worry about that at all. All right. Midpoint, the standard line, midpoint of the high and the low of the last 26 sessions. You're going to take the high and the low of the last 26 bars, and then you're going to divide that by two. That number is your midpoint. So here's how that works. So what we're going to do is the, the line that's closest to the price section, this one right here, is always the turning line. And then the standard line is the second closest. So if you want to, you can go fast, slow, or fast, medium, and slow in order for your calculations. So on the standard line here, STD, how you calculate this number up is you take 26 days, you start from here, and you go back 26 days, boom, find the low, find the high, add those two creatures together, divide them by two, comes out to 425.42. Now, the indicator is going to be on your chart right there at 425.42. If we break this area, now notice, the cloud is red. The price action is below the cloud, which telling us is we're going to go lower. This is our overhead resistance. We could have shorted here. We could short here. Or we can wait until we cross back below this area at 450, which is that red line. And as soon as we close below this, then we can actually go a target of that 425 area. Super simple. All right, cloud span A. All right, uh, midpoint of the turning line and the standard line shifted 26 bars forward. So how this works is you take the turning line and you take the standard line, you take the midpoint between those two creatures, and you shift it in the future 26 bars. That's going to give you either the high, or the high of the cloud or the low of the cloud, depending on where you're at. Cloud span B is the midpoint of the high and the low of the last 52 sessions. And what you're going to do is you're going to shift it 26 bars. So if you took this example of today and you went back 52 bars, you'd take the midpoint between A and B, and that's the midpoint you shift it in the future, 26 bars that gives you the other side of the cloud. Now, the lagging line is just the price line shifted back 26 bars. So that's the lag part. So in other words, in the price action right here, this price action, it shifted back 26 bars in the past. Now, in this example, you can see that Apple was in a major uptrend, right? And then when the blue line crossed, 
then Apple started going lower. So that's a trade that we actually do. So here's how you calculate the lagging line. It's the price action of today shifted back because it's going to be lagging the exact same thing that Fausto said. It's going to be lagging the price action. All right, Ichimoku cloud chart signals. So I'm 30 minutes in. I still have 30 minutes, so we're going to do a lot of live charts. So Ichimoku cloud chart signals. Lagging line crossing the cloud is the major signal of trend change. It's the slowest signal. It's also the strongest signal. The price crossing the cloud is the second slowest signal, but it's kind of the one I like the best because it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's just the, the right mix of power and also frequency. So the price crossing the cloud. And the price and the lagging lines touching the cloud can be a signal. And the cloud spans crossing change in colors can also be a signal. And the turning lines crossing the standard line for a crisscross is also a decent signal. It, it, it's, it's, it's fast, but it's kind of unreliable sometimes if you're not on a really good strong trend. So I'll make you aware of that. All right, so let's go through some of these signals. Here we've got an old chart of Apple. You can see it's a massive uptrend. And then you can see where this blue line crosses the cloud. That is a very slow signal, but it's also a very strong signal because remember that thing's going to lag 26 bars. So you'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. About right here in this area somewhere is where that said short Apple when the blue got down here. Now, as far as things go, if you shorted Apple at 580 and then you waited until this blue line crossed. I mean, it's not bad. You're going to get the meat of the trade. That's not terrible, but you can make it so much better by just doing this. If you've got a one, two, or three bar close below the cloud, those are good signals. One day close below is going to be uh, aggressive. Two bar close will be moderate. Three bar close is going to be conservative. And a, a three bar close plus a lagging line will be super conservative. So in other words, if you have three bars below here, that's going to be a good short. You'd short that, and then you'd stay short until you had one, two, or three bars close back above the cloud. And we would short this, and we would stay short as long as we possibly could. Now, very um, uh, these are counter trend trades at this point. So if you've got a massive sell-off below the cloud, when the lagging line hits the cloud or the price action hits the cloud, those are areas where we want to fade or go against that cloud so in other words we would short those areas now here are the most quick signals but they're kind of unreliable unless you're on the right side of the trend so you've got a massive uptrend and you see where the the turning line and the lagging line cross i wouldn't i wouldn't do that i what i would do is i'd be like okay and now it's going to sell off and it's going to go to either the top of the cloud or the bottom of the cloud is what i would do and then if neither one of those worked i'd be like okay we've got three closes below the cloud i now i got to go short I would stay with that, and then when you get a Chris here and then a cross here, that's a good short. You get a Chris here, a cross here, that's a good short. Chris here, cross there, that's a good short. But I wouldn't just short the one up above the cloud. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. All right, so bullish signals. Bullish signals is when the price is above the cloud. Prices in the cloud are bullish if they come from the bullish side. So in other words, if price is above the cloud and they sell off into the cloud, we're going to want to buy that stuff, all right? And then the lagging line crossing the cloud is the main signal of trend change. Price crossing the cloud is an earlier but less reliable warning of trend change. Price and lagging line will often find support on the edges, so be aware of that. And then the cloud spans crossing may be a sign that the trend is changing. Be on the lookout for thick clouds after a run, which could mean a very quick change. All right, those are the bullish signals. I'm going to take a quick drink, and I'm going to put this on the bearish signals. They're the exact opposite of bullish. So read these real quick while I get a quick drink. All right, so there's the bearish signals. Now, what I want to do next is, all right, we already talked about the results on the back testing. They're really good. It's got a good track record. It's going to work. Now, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go into live charts here. I think it's what I'm going to do next. Time frame selection, we talked about that. Oh, one thing that I skipped, I want to make sure that everybody understands, is stop losses, how important they are. The best stop that I have found to use is a parabolic SAR. 
if if you kind of are struggling with stop losses or trailing stop losses, start playing around with parabolic SAR. All of my back testing and with our systems and stuff, use a component of parabolic SAR. It's super, super easy to use, and it'll take your uh, your profits up a notch or two just by using it. If you're long, you can use the bottom of the cloud, and if you're short, you're going to use the top of the cloud. Now, let's go find some good trade setups. I'm going to discard this. Now, I use TradeStation. All right? I use TradeStation, and a couple of the reasons I use TradeStation is because I've been using TradeStation for years, and it's easy for me to use. Another reason I use TradeStation is because it's super powerful, and I can do stuff like this. So I can go Cloud Trend, and do you see this screen? Do you see TradeStation? You should. I can hyperlink this thing to where this is all the all the trades in the S&P 500. Do you see that? And then what I can do is I can go, okay, TradeStation, do me a little math real quick. Just go, and I'm going to go click, 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 click. And I'm going to say a newly above the cloud, new, new below, new above, new above, new above, new above, new above. You see that, how that works? And that's going to do a lot of the homework for me. So in other words, it's just going to scan and go, hey, you've got all this stuff that is, either, that is either newly above or newly below the cloud. These are really good trade setups that you should look for. Now, I want to be uh, super fair, so let's go do this. Let me find one that's got, uh, let's go stock charts, S-T-O-C-K-C-H-A-R-T-S. Now, I know not everybody's going to have super great, wonderful, wonderful charts, so let's do this. Let's go stockcharts.com, and this puts us all on the same playing field. Do you see the website stockcharts.com on your web, on, in, the, in the webinar right now? All right, so then what you're going to do, no matter what platform you use, everybody can use this one, okay? So here's how you do this. Watch, go stockcharts.com, scroll down here to this one that says additional tools on the lower right-hand side, predefined scan results. We're going to click right there. Yeah, Toss is a good tool too. Toss has, Toss and TradeStation both have Ichimoku and they both scan. They just scan a little bit different. And then we're going to go technical indicators. We're going to scroll down here to candlestick patterns, Okay. And then we're going to go down here where it says Ichimoku patterns, I-C-H-I-M-O-K-U patterns. You see where it says moved above the cloud and moved below the cloud? That's one of our favorite signals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the control key, and I'm going to left click here and left click there. Now, it's going to scan, and it's going to say, okay, Chief, here are all the predefined moved above this cl cloud scans. And then I'm going to sort these by volume, okay? So here we go. We've got now we don't want to do trade pink sheets. That's just crazy. We're not going to pay. We're not going. To, we're not going to trade something. Trading a penny. That's craziness. But what we can do is we can scan. Oh, look at here, McDonald's. Uh, that's a decent one. It's got a ton of volume. Let's take a look at MCD McDonald's. So what I would do is I would click this chart over here to the left, the first one, and then I would just set this pattern up like this right here. I would go uh, overlays. I'd go Ichimoku full. And then I'd change the rest of this to none if you want to, just to make your life easier. And just go none, none, none. There we go. And then we go none. Okay. And then uh, is there a way to make this a default? All right. And then I just go update. All right. Here we go. Now, you can see here McDonald's, Ichimoku, had one, it closed on Friday slightly above the cloud. That would be a new law. Does that make sense? Now, if we wanted to come back over here and we'd say, okay, what else do we want? Um, let's see. Oh, Lowe's, L-O-W, right there. There's a decent one, Lowe's. Then I can just go back over here and go L-O-W, L-O-W, bing. Oh, look at that. Lowe's was below the cloud, and it went back above the cloud. It's a decent signal. Let's see if we can find any more decent ones down here. I'm just trying to find stuff that everybody would know what it is. There's Hershey, H-S-Y, H-S-Y. Everybody likes a little chocolate, right? Let's take it H S Y. Boom. There we go. Hershey is a new long. It was below the cloud and now it's above the cloud. Now let's go see if we can find some good shorts. All right, good shorts are the same way. Move below the cloud. Sirius satellite radio. Um, Three dollar stock looks like it's going to go lower. We can come over here and just do S I R. Uh, S. What? Hold on. Did I have to say the symbol right? Yeah. S I R I. S I R I. So I'm just going to go S-I-R-R, -R, ding. There we go. So Sirius is a new sell signal with a stop of about 390 and a target of 360. Does it make sense what I'm doing here, guys? All right, if you want to do Suncor, 
see if we find any other ones we like wayfair w you know so here's a bunch of stuff that looks like really good shorts and you just scan through them now you don't want to trade stuff that's pennies per share you don't want to take trade over the counter market pink sheets trade stuff that has really good volume and that you understand usually okay all right now let's go back into trade station because i want to go through a bunch of different markets what i'm going to do is i'm going to go here to ichimoku cloud and then i'm going to go at es all right let's go through some markets really quickly the es is it a long or a short right now is it is it below the cloud yes or no yeah it's below the cloud so it's it's bearish in nature and the overhead resistance is the purple line now when you're trading ichimoku on a daily when it's between the purple and the yellow like that you have to wait until if it if you're going to get long and you're going to try to ride it back to the top of the cloud here i don't recommend that on this this one right now you could do that but wait above 1958 if you're going to be short you want it to close back below 1936. let's take a look at the ym the dow dow is in no man's land it's sold off really good now, as we're going along, look at this. One, two, three. You see this bearish signal on Ichimoku? Called it perfectly, and then it started dropping. Now, did we know it was going to drop 1,000 points? No, we just knew it was going to go lower. And then you see nice little snapback, and then overhead resistance. And right now, it's a hurry up and wait situation. Let's see if we can see what the NASDAQ's doing real quick. NASDAQ. It helps if you put the symbol in there, right? At NQ. Boom. Here we are. All right, so NASDAQ is... It's still a better long than it is short, okay? It's it's a better short than it is long. But right now, since it bounced above the yellow and the purple, the place that you want to wait and reshort it at would be up here around the cloud. Or if you like a little bit more risk, you would get long the NASDAQ at 43.15. Your stop loss would be 42.50, and your target would be 4,500, okay? Let's take a look at 50, and your target would be 4,500, okay? Let's take a look at the Russell. Uh, Russell is a, a better short than it is a long, but it's going to bounce because it closed above the yellow and the purple, the turning standard line. It's going to make a it's going to make a push for the bottom of the cloud. So if you want to do a counter trend long up to about 1220, you could. I would let it bounce up there and short it though. Let's take a look at the 30-year bond. 30-year bond. So a couple of days ago we bought it right here see how that worked right there so we had we had the bond market above the cloud it broke through our first support broke through our second support and we're like all right let's wait boom it tags the cloud we bought the, we bought that and we flipped it out as soon as it hit the yellow line again so pretty simple right let's take a look at gc so what is gc right now gc is gold so gold is a great short it's below the cloud went back into the cloud rolled back over broke below the turning and the standard line and now looks like gold is going to drop again and take out a thousand let's take a look at at, uh, at crude oil everybody's talking about crude oil so first off did this strategy work with crude oil over the longer term yes look it had a great short here short here and then you would have shorted it here and then when it crossed above it that was a long and then this is a new short right back in here and i'm going to zoom in to today's price action stuff all right, now take a look at this. There we go. Make it nice and big. So this was a sell signal, one, two, or three. Rejection. And now look, we close above the yellow, above the purple. Where are we going to go? We're probably going to test the bottom of this cloud. So this is a decent counter trend long, okay? A decent counter trend long with a target of about $50. All right. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take just a, a quick two-second break to grab a drink. If you guys want to give me symbols, let me see if I, I think I can, I think I can manipulate this thing so I can see more questions because I know they're going to fly by. I want to spend a little time here really quickly just going through your symbols. Now, I'll try to get to as many as I can. CMD. CMD is too thin. It's too thin. I can't help you with that one. Sorry. Um, it's just, it's a weird looking chart. Let's do SPLK. SPLK. SPLK is a short. Uh, at 5965 a stop at 6338 uh, and a target of $50 uh, caterpillar CAT is a short with a stop of 7432 and a target of $62 uh, SPY is the same thing as the S&P 
Um, right now on the SPY, you're waiting for a close either above 169 for a long or a, a short of 195 for a short. AAPL, Apple is, <clears throat> excuse me, Apple is a good short, but it's a counter trend long. Okay, so longer term, Apple is a short, but it closed above the turning and the standard line. So you'd be long Apple at 114.21. Stop would be 110, and your target would be the cloud here at about 120. Yeah, Forex, it works fine in Forex. You just have to ask for a specific one. TSLA. Tesla is, all right, so this is one thing that we teach in the course. This is called a lagging line hook, and this thing will rip your face off if done incorrectly. This is a head fake. Notice all of this price action. Do you see all this price action that's below the cloud? The lagging line, this white line, did not confirm the move. It said, uh, T Tesla said, I'm going lower, and the lagging line goes, no, you're not. You just think you are. And now it's going to go higher, so be careful with that one, okay? So this is a long with a stop of 245 and a target of 280. Uh, U.S. cash, let's do at CD for uh, Canadian dollar. Canadian dollar is a short with a stop of 7603 and a target of 74. XLF, see how fast you can go through charts? And then they're really simple to read. XLF is a short. Um, you're going to have to wait for it to close below 2304 to get short with a target of 2199. WDC is a short with a stop of 8201 and a target of 75. JBLU, uh, JetBlue, that's a good looking long. That's a pretty, pretty good looking chart too. So sold off because the entire market dropped. So this is a market proxy stock. And is doing great. That looks phenomenal. Like everything else is getting annihilated. This is a really good looking chart. Long at 2568. Stop at 2374 and a target of $30. Uh, TNA. TNA. TNA is a great short with a stop of 7222 and a target of $55. AMZN. Amazon is a good looking long. Crossed over Friday. Above the cloud, stop of 511, target 600. Do all the same rules apply for a one-minute chart? Yeah, but I, Craig, I wouldn't use it on a one-minute chart. What I would use is I would use a daily, a 60-minute, and a 10-minute. For me, I personally don't go below a five with this strategy. You can use, I, what, The lowest I would go would probably be a three-minute chart. A one-minute is going to get a little busy, okay? Uh, G-I-L-D. G-I-L-D is a... It's a short because it's below the cloud, but you see how it's above the purple and the yellow? So what I would do is I'd wait to reshort GILD at 115 in this area, or if you're already long, your stop would be 105 and your target would be 115. NFLX, Netflix. So Netflix is getting close. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars below the cloud, six most recent. I would wait for this lagging line. Wait for this white line to cross with you to the downside. Right now, it's a decent short with a stop of 105 and a target of 70. S-U-N-E, Sun Edison. Sun Edison is a short with a stop of 1547, a short at 1128, and a target of $5. Uh, if you had to do a lightning round, would you use the indicator for long or short for new... Yeah, yeah, long, short, neutral, that's fine. Yeah, that's not a, not a problem. AVP, I can actually give you entries, targets, and stops on it. AVP, uh, this is Avon. It's going to go to zero. Avon's going to go to zero. Uh, the stop is $5. The target's zero. It's not going to go to zero, but it's going to go to $2. Um, I did CDW, I thought. CDW, did I not? Yeah, uh, I don't. Maybe I did or not. Uh, CDW, long at 4110, stop 3961, target $45. Boeing, can you use uh, can you use a 10 minute only? I wouldn't just use a 10 minute. I would use the here's how I do it. I use the daily to let me get the overall direction, and then I would move to a 10 minute to keep me on the right up above the cloud, below the cloud, above the cloud, below the cloud. It's a good question. CVX, okay, CVX. CVX is a short with a stop of $77.50, target of $70. All right, uh, let's see. Show the time chart slide from the beginning of the presentation. Um, how about I do that after I get done doing some live charts so I don't have to switch back and forth. Um, all right, uh, 
N E M. Newmont Mining is going to do the uh, same thing as gold's going to do, which is go down. It's a short at 624. Stop is 1716. Target is $12. HD. Home Depot. Home Depot is a little sideways, right? I mean, it's a little sideways, but it's a better long than it is a short. Long at 115. Stop. I wouldn't risk much on this because it's so sideways. Stop would be 113. Target would be 125. Fitbit will be too hard to do because it's an IPO. The daily is just not going to work. So we have to cheat and go to a 60. So 60. Fitbit is a short according to the 60. Stop of 34.34 and a target at $26. How do you determine your targets? I use a special blend of unicorn tears and fairy dust in order to get targets, William. No, I do it like this. Uh, let's go, let's go AAPL because everybody can understand this one. Hold on. Um, AAPL. Let's say that we were an Apple on a daily chart here. I'll show you how to do the targets. If I was going to do a counter trend trade with Apple target wise, and I said, okay, I'm long at 114.21, and my stop is going to be 110, then my my risk is that box. Does that make sense? Okay. They're not moving averages. It's an Ichimoku indicator. Then what I would do is I'd say, okay, that's my risk. Then my reward has to be one times that box or two times that box or three times that box. So that's how I'm coming up with the targets in my head. So if this, if I'm long at 114 and my risk is 110, my target is going to be about 120-ish. Does that make sense? So that's how it's just an old professional trader trick. You always figure out risk first, multiply your risk times two, three, four, or five, or ten, or whatever you're going for, and then you just kind of know what you're doing really, really quickly. Yeah, you you can risk whatever you want. I wouldn't do anything less than two to one or three to one, hardly ever. A lot of my trades are ten to one sometimes. Um, all right, let me hit the PowerPoint again because I'm running out of time. I got about ten more minutes. Okay, I want to hit PowerPoint. I want to make you a special offer on a course on how to learn how to do this better. All right. And then I'll do more live charts. Sound fair? And then I'll do live charts until the next speaker is up. So let me go back here to PowerPoint. All right. Trade setups. We did. The, all right. So first off, you see how easy it is to use. It's pretty simple, right? If you know the basics, you can scan for stuff. What I would recommend, charts that went above the cloud or below the cloud is where you should start. That are, those are the best kind of go to locks trades. They're, they're powerful enough, and you're going to get enough of them to, you know, Add some uh, add some cash to your account. All right, let's go through this. So success stories. The course was awesome. I've taken one bond trade and made over nine hundred dollars. Do you think I'm happy? I just entered the bond trade, shorted again, where I took further profits earlier today. After you made you, made me greedy for further profits, I'm happy dancing. This is the first time I had a successful trade during the course. I have the hardest head in the world. You couldn't have made it simpler. This one's from Greg. Uh, dude, thanks. You're like the only reason I've kept at it with this trading. And now that I'm profitable, I can't thank you enough. It was really great, and I can't wait to attend the gold trading class. Thank you so much for all you do. Um, the webinar series was a great experience, very informative and educational, lots of fun. That's no surprise. All of your courses have been great learning opportunities and great values. So I'm asking you if you want to join and be one of our other success stories. We are inviting you to join us. So who is this for? If you're serious about making real monies in the market, if you're looking for a proven system, if you can follow a simple set of rules and directions, and if you know your success is tied to you taking action and actually doing these trades, then it's probably a good fit for you and I. All right. Now, who is this not for? Who is this not for? If you're a holy gale seeker, because I'm dyslexic and did not uh, double check this slide, that's it, evidently, if you're a holy gale seeker or holy grail seeker, this is not for you. If you suffer from hopium, if you suffer from the hopium disease, if you think you're going to take a $5,000 account and by the end of October, it's going to mean a, a million dollars to you, that, that's not what this is. This is about real trading, about taking some wins, about taking some losses, and about grinding it out, and about working your ass off in order to make money. All right. If you're a guru surfer, if you follow me and Fausto and Keen and and um, all the rest of the guys on this on this webinar series, and you follow 400 other guys, right? This is probably not for you. What you ought to do is you ought to focus. Pick pick one or two guys that you kind of gravitate towards on this webinar series, and learn as much as you can from those people, 
and then make a plan and see if you can actually execute it as opposed to following 9,000 different trading gurus. If you can't make a decision, obviously I am not your person. And if you like to make things more complicated for no good reason at all, please don't buy the course because it won't be for you because it's laid out really simple. All right, there are three types of people. There are people that uh, make things happen. There are those that watch things happen. And there are those that ask what just happened. Hopefully you're in the top two groups. So here's what you're going to get. Here's a fraction of what you'll learn. First, you're going to get the number one best-selling Ichimoku course uh, on in the English-speaking world. Uh, I'm going to give you seven proven uh, setups. I'm going to give you the trading rules and indicator settings with checklist and cheat sheets uh, with entries and exits on those seven proven setups. I'm going to give you the stop loss and the targets for each trade setup. I'm going to show you how to scan the markets with Ichimoku properly, how to filter out the best trades so that you'll never guess what to do next, and how to avoid head fakes. All right, This is really important. Sometimes Ichimoku will give you a head fake and you got to know how to recognize it. Um, so yes, that's how you do it. All right. You have zero risk. There is a 100% satisfaction guaranteed. No questions asked guarantee. If you don't love it, I don't want your money. I always deliver period. And my goal is for you to have a 10 times X return on your investment. You can take the entire course for 30 days and, and keep it and profit from it. And you can call us up and go, the course was wonderful. I don't like Hubert's accent, and he cusses too much for me. Please give my money back. And we'll give you your money back. Uh, life is too short, and I don't need the headaches for it. So here's what you do. If you're interested in taking the on-demand course, then you want to go over to hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy. I'm going to put this in the chat box really quickly here for you. Bing. There you go. That is it right there. And Or you can call area code 859-963-3445. Heads up, if you call, I don't have anybody working here today except me. So if you call, you're going to be leaving a message, and then they'll take your order and fulfill it on Monday, okay? So if you go to hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy, here's all you're going to get. You are going to get Ichimoku Cloud Charting Secrets, $197 value. How to use Ichimoku Candlesticks, a $97 value uh, with candlesticks. I'm going to give you four follow-up webinars, one per week and one day of live trading for $97. So that's a current value of $488. Your special offer today will be $97, okay, $97. If you go to hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy, it's only for the first 50 people. All right, now I usually don't have to pitch this thing too hard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back over to live charts, okay? And I'm gonna do this. You should be able to see this right here, hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy. You can call area code 859-963-3445. I'm the only one here today. Everybody else has today off. So just be aware of that. If you do call, just leave a message, and then we'll fulfill your order first thing Monday when the team gets in here. All right, so let's do some more symbols really quick. I got about two or three more minutes. All right, let me move my screen out of here, and uh, I'm going to just do symbol after symbol. Uh, oh, here, here, has anybody ever taken this course? This is I'm flying by the seat of my pants here. Anybody ever taken... Ichimoku Cloud Charting Secrets. If you don't mind, if you've taken it, good, bad, or indifferent, just to help other people decide whether it's a good course to grab a hold of. All right, FAS. Let's take a look here. FAS. All right, thank you. I think, thank you, Monty G. I appreciate that. FAS is a short with a stop of $29.46 and a target of $22. Robert, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, FB, Facebook. All right, so Facebook is is one of those lagging line hooks because it didn't confirm. It's going to be a long stop of 82.29 and a target of 100. I did and learned from it. Good course. Thanks, Lewis. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I've taken it. It's great. <laughs> Thanks, King. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, yes, it's worth far more than the cost. Thanks, Jess. I appreciate it. Uh, example of a scalp, scalp trade on crude. All right. So if you're going to scalp trade crude, then you're probably going to use something lower than a 10-minute time frame. You might want to use a three or a five-minute. And then on crude, I would uh, I would cross it over the cloud in, in order to what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me and Keen are both really good uh, advocates for Ichimoku. We both love it. All right. Uh, DNO. DNO. Let's take a look here. DNO. DNO is about to be a good long. It's, it's above the yellow turning line at 63.22, target of 69. Oh, three. I like that. Okay. 
let's see here. NKE, Nike, NKE. NKE is a good long here at 110.51 and a target of 120. AA, AA is, ooh, a smoking short. I would let it bounce to 10, short it, use about a buck stop and a target of $8 on that one. So that's on. QID, QID, eh, I would let it sell off to 34 before I'd pick it up. All right, let's see here what we got here. Uh, CMG, CMG. CMG, great little long here at 729, stop at 716, target 760. All right, I got one more minute here. Exxon Mobil, Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil is a good, uh, Exxon Mobil, Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil is a good uh, short right now with a stop of 73.53. If it does climb and close above 73.53, it'll be along with a target of 80. How does it work when the market makes big moves? Uh, it works fine. I mean, we were able to catch most of, not all of this, but we were able to catch a lot of this move right here to the downside. So it works great. All right. ADBE, one more, and I'm going to go. Adobe is a, you got to wait, wait on Adobe. It's kind of figuring out if the lagging line is going to stay down here or go above it. All right. So Andrew Keen is up next. Here's my link. HubertCenters.com forward slash cloudy. And um, heads up, if you don't know anything about options or options trading, listen to Andrew. I've seen a lot of really good and really bad options traders since I've been doing this for 20 plus years. Andrew is probably one of the best, if not the best options trader I've ever seen in my life. Now, he's going to talk fast and he trades fast too, but he's a really, really good trader. So if you're interested in op watching uh, a professional trader, one of the best in the world. And I've seen a lot of them, guys. Andrew's a really, really, really good options trader. So if you're interested in learning how to trade options, Andrew uh, is up next. Fausto, thanks for having me.